This is Marco Reus. This is Shinji Kagawa. This is Nuri Shahin. Hello, this is Jaden Sancho. And you're listening to the Yellow Wall podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 460 of the Yellow World Pods. I'm Joshua from Mutsko and today we will talk about Borussia Dortmund's draw away to Bayer Leverkusen, a cup exit against VfB Stuttgart and we will preview Saturday's top spiel against Leipzig for all that and more. Joins me Matthias Zug. Hello Matthias, how are you doing? Well, Borussia Dortmund notwithstanding, uh, <laughs> I'm actually doing quite well. How are you? Yeah, I'm I'm doing uh, pretty good too. It's uh, it's nice that I've uh, managed to not be as emotionally attached to Borussia Dortmund as I've uh, been and not been in the past. It's it's a fluctuating thing. I mean, when uh, you write for ESPN about Borussia Dortmund, basically become a beat reporter. I think this is where you lose all attachment. But uh, once yeah. that ends, uh, you sort of refind back to the club. But uh, I don't know. It's it's been fleeting a little bit. Uh, I I have to admit. Nevertheless, um, I think it's it's fair to say that uh, currently, um, it's it's very negative because uh, you can very much see the sporting development, uh, you know, just crater. Um, yeah. so I guess I guess contextually it makes more sense um to talk about the Leverkusen game first because that sort of sets up, uh, the match against Stuttgart. Um, because Matthias, um. In a way, I understand why Tessic took the approach to mm -hmm. basically sit back and uh, play. <laughs> the episode title is already written down. I, this episode will be called Borussia Darmstadt because I feel like that was sort of the tactical approach against <sighs> Leverkusen where we tried yeah. to um, defend, sit back, hope uh, that Leverkusen somehow doesn't break through. Um, uh, great help that uh, Rami Benzabaini was not available for that game because that meant... Uh, the matchup was not Benzabaini versus Frempong on the left side, but Riasson versus Frempong, which I think was great damage limitation. Um, that all being said, um, yeah, I was not very uh, impressed with how Dortmund defended, slash then once they gained possession, dealt with that possession because everything felt like, oh, we have the ball, let's counterattack. Oh, we can counterattack. Oh, we've lost the ball. Okay, back to defending. That was basically the entire game, minus the one great attack that we had, uh, where we nearly scored from, and maybe um, the other uh, attack where Meunier played a cross in and Fulcro could have won the game. But uh, yeah, Matthias, like I said, the setup is very annoying to me. Um, it nearly worked <laughs> for Dortmund. I'm I'm sad to say, and as I introduced the segment, is I can understand where he is coming from, Terzic, that is because uh, recently Dortmund just have not played well, you know, and could have probably not gone into this with the more attacking setup or it would have been very messy as other games have shown. But in the moment in time, I can understand it, but in the uh, 10,000 feet view, I am heartbroken that this is the state of Borussia Dortmund. Sorry, okay. I don't have. I don't no. even have a question for you. That's no, just my. No. I, I mean, I, I think this is. I think this is group therapy again. Um, and again, I, I wrote this on on the social media platform formerly known as Twitter. Uh, that I understand what Tezic is doing. I understand why he's doing it. That doesn't mean I have to like it. This is not Sean Dyche's Burnley. This is not Dirk Schuster's Darmstadt. This is Borussia fucking Dortmund. And I demand better than a Thomas Doll-like approach from this club. And honestly, with this squad. And this is the thing that pisses me off. And I have shifted into the Terzic needs to get chucked out camp. Because these two matches, these last two... And then in combination with some other matches that were good, showed me that he is not fit to lead Borussia Dortmund as a manager. Because 
Um, he he not only lacks the tactical wherewithal and acumen for this level, or the experience, he he lacks the backbone and guts to do it, and that's what bothers me. You know, I mean, say what you will about you know the ill-fated months of Peter Bosch. He wasn't scared. Um, if we look at Lucien Favre, at the end, he kind of got in his own head and way, but Dortmund still played with a more positive influence to their game. And even under Peter Stöger, where Dortmund were boring, but they weren't passively abject, which is what this is. And it's not good enough. It is not good enough at all. I'll be brutally honest. I would get rid of Edin Terzic immediately because you're going to go to the next round of the Champions League. That's all done. I'd get rid of him and, you know, at least until the end of the season, maybe bring in someone like Enrico Maaßen, um, who at least is also understands the club and understands the dynamic of the club. Uh, some of the young players also know him because they played underneath him. And he has experience. Yes, he got sacked by Augsburg, but he also tried to do something different at Augsburg, which didn't quite come off uh, because it's Augsburg. But what bothers me about this approach of Borussia Dortmund is one reading constantly about underdog football, underdog football. Borussia Dortmund is not an underdog team. And when you look at how they have managed to play well and get results against Newcastle, Milan, Hoffenheim in the Cup, just some as an example where, yes, they played a little more compact, they played a little bit more on the break. However, their build-up play worked, their passing worked, their movement worked. There was no, um, let's just say, there was no lack of confidence and structure defensively. It worked. And when we look at Borussia Mönchengladbach match, I mean, that's the perfect example. The first 30 minutes, Dortmund played like this in terms of a passive, lackluster, lacking self-confidence and structure team. And then they changed, and for 60 minutes, they were the dominant team with great possession, with fluid movement and attacking play, solid defense, great buildup. They are absolutely 100% capable of playing that style of football week in and week out. However, they do not do it. And I put the blame solely and squarely at the feet of Idin Tezic at this point, because he sets the team up to play in this negative, passive, chicken shit style, and it simply has to stop. The players are not built to play this style, to be perfectly honest. That is not how this squad was put together. That's not, you don't need a Royce, a Brandt, a Mukoko, a Jamie Bino Gittens. You don't need any of those players if this is the type of low block bullshit soccer you want to put out there. Then you bring in, you know, you, you just basically port in Urs Fischer's Union Berlin from the past seasons. Granted, now you're playing like Urs Fischer's Union Berlin from this season. <laughs> and it because you've got the wrong players to play this defensive style, and I'll be honest, it in Tezic, if you want to play this type of style, Go to the Zweite Liga, go to the Dritte Liga, find a team there and low block your way to success. I don't give a crap. But for Borussia Dortmund, it's simply unacceptable and it is not good enough. I remember matches in the past where Dortmund did lose. I mean, lost. I, I still remember one where Benda scored a winner for Leverkusen. But Dortmund was in that match. It was back and forth. They went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. There was no fear of getting beaten. There was just playing. And Borussia Dortmund did not play twice against Stuttgart or against Leverkusen. And against Bayern, like at times they kind of wanted to, but then they didn't, and they had no identity. The identity was there against Milan and Newcastle. And the second 60 minutes, or the 60, uh, final 60 minutes of Gladbach, it was there, and they played it, and they played it well, and they can, and they can play it with confidence, and they love to play that way. These players don't like to play this low-block crap. And so you can't 
exchange all of these players for players that can play low block. No, you get rid of the one person who's the cheapest to get rid of, and that is Idin Tezic, and you bring in someone who understands how to unlock these players to play the positive style of football that they are absolutely capable of doing because they showed it also in the second half of last season consistently. And that's why, for me, he's got to go big time. That's it's. I've seen enough. I was giving him the benefit of the doubt even just a week or two ago. That's gone. All that is all completely been eroded by Leverkusen. I don't care if there was a point out of it. Dortmund didn't deserve the point. I was hoping Leverkusen would dump six goals on Dortmund. I was hoping Stuttgart would do the same because that's exactly what that style of football deserves every time. I mean, 31% possession against Leverkusen and a passing accuracy of 72%. It's so mind-bogglingly unacceptable because then I look at positive play from Inta or I watch Tottenham under Ange Postacoglu who you know went three to three against Man City yeah then before that they lost three in a row but before that they won like five in a row because they're playing with no fear whatsoever and that is what I demand from Borussia Dortmund and those stats that you just that you just mentioned are for me the nail in the coffin of Terzic as manager at Borussia Dortmund because I'm sorry, you don't need a chicken shit kid on the bench to run this squad. And that's who he is. And the the, the biggest indictment really is there were little stints in the game against Leverkusen where Dortmund were on the front foot and where it looked good and where Leverkusen looked vulnerable. And it was like almost like, well, if you had played this way the entire game, if this was your mindset from the outset, you would have probably uh, put a lot of pressure on Leverkusen and could have uh, put real problems um, and real questions uh, for them to solve. And instead, we made it really easy for Leverkusen the entire game. Uh, I mean, Dortmund were pretty lucky that they got this uh, really nice goal, which was really well-crafted in the fifth minute, but that sort of allowed them to then completely stop uh, playing any any attacking football. I mean, the, the next shot <laughs> from Dortmund in the first half and only shot after the goal is Jamie Bino Gittens in the 36th minute, which was uh, from seven uh, yards out, uh, 17 yards out and uh, was blocked. And other than that, um, it, it was it was almost tragic to, to see. I mean, after uh, Leverkusen... Um, scored, uh, there, there was a, a moment where Dortmund did uh, try to come back a little bit, um, but those were like five minutes and that evaporated real quick. Um, I don't I don't know. Um, overall, it's just, like you said, it is not good enough and it's, it's really hard to um, say someone needs to go when they were um, one win away from winning the entire freaking championship last season, but um, I mean, I, I I don't know who of our listeners follows Abel Mescheros on, on Twitter, but he um, posted an XG plot and, and basically the the averages of that, uh, the average lines uh, where things are going right now for Borussia Dortmund, I think over the time frame of the, of the, of the season. Um, and and it's, it's periodically just the, the XG created is going down and the XG conceded is going up and uh, they're uh, basically two weeks away or three weeks away from, from meeting in the middle. And um, yeah, Dortmund are playing like a team that is battling relegation right now. And I think Tobias Escher uh, made the point that it's uh, all nice and well to play maybe against the better teams in the league with a low block, but then don't be surprised if you are completely void of any creativity once you meet teams that themselves which is play the low block. So, um, yeah, Matthias, I think it's it's been really revealing to to watch uh, how Dortmund uh, started in these games. Um, the Leverkusen game, like you said, the, the, the point was fairly lucky. I mean, Gregor Kobel once again uh, had to make a lot of uh, enormous saves. XG at the end was 2.1, was 0.7. So if there's any praise for this, that Dortmund did take the pressure well, for most of the game, but like you said, I don't really want to praise this approach and style of play because, as you said, it is not Borussia Dortmund, it is not Dortmund's identity whatsoever, 
and that of all people, Eden Terzic has Dortmund playing this way is just it's a cry for help. It's 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 crazy to me because if you think about Terzic when he first the first time he took over when he when he jumped in and took over for half a season from Lucien Favre, the style of football that Dortmund then played it was like a breath of fresh air. I mean, they tore through that second half of the season. They won the DFB Pokal. And part of me wonders if one of the massive losses for Dortmund is nobody on the pitch. It's somebody at Tezic's side, because we can't forget that his key assistant manager had to step away. I think it was due to health reasons or family reasons. And that is a massive loss, apparently, because it in Tezic... The team, the coaching team has occasionally made some good adjustments. There's no doubt about that at half. But you walk into a match like against Leverkusen, like against Stuttgart. I'm sorry. I mean, just saying those clubs, nothing against those clubs. They're playing fantastic football. I wish them all the best for the season. I think Stuttgart against Leverkusen in the DFB Pokal final would probably be an absolutely electrifying match to watch. Where- I don't know if you've checked but, the schedule, but they actually meet each other this weekend. Okay, yeah. So I mean, that would be that. I'm looking forward to watching that because those two teams are playing the style of football that Borussia Dortmund has played in the past, should play again. But you know, some people the the let's call it. I see. I've seen this so many times. Oh, the difference Jude Bellingham makes by not being there. This isn't Jude Bellingham. This isn't a Jude Bellingham problem. You know that that is just cheap lazy quote-unquote analytics from the British media that doesn't actually address the real core of the issue. The real core of the issue is that Aiden Tezic is overwhelmed by this. He doesn't have the experience on the bench in his coaching staff next to him. And honestly, given what we know now this week with the the issues between, let's call it the, the Kia side of the club and the Tadzic side of the club uh, with with uh, Stanich, who was kind of a co-sporting director type person, even though I'd never heard of the guy before, um, having to leave. I, I can't help but wonder that, um, you know, if Michael Zorc was still there, if this kind of would already be resolved by now in some shape or form, because... Somebody has to stand in there and be like, no, this this isn't acceptable anymore. You have to change your approach um, tactically. Do these things differently. And the problem is you're go- you have veteran players in the squad who are vocal and intelligent. You look at Mats Hummels. They will not be happy with this. And they will say things because Mats Hummels has earned more of a right to say what he thinks than Eden Tazic has, given their careers. And he's going to say, listen, this is bullshit. And then you're going to get camps. And then you're going to get issues. The one thing I will say, and this shows how how excellent of a goalkeeper Kobel is, is that he is letting the, um, let's call it nervousness that's ahead of him, in front of him on the pitch, not affect his performance. That was always the the downside for Roman Bürki. I was just going to say this. When the team played well and the defensive line played well, he was one of the best keepers in the Bundesliga. He proved as much. Um, but when the back line evaporated, then he overcompensated. He felt like he had to do too much. He was in his head, and uh, he, he didn't play well. Kobe, notwithstanding one or two uh, mistakes he made, I'm thinking of Stuttgart the first time, um, he, he doesn't have that issue. And so he's a mentally stronger keeper. And that's really, I mean, let's be honest, that's one of the big, aside from the physical skills, that's one of the big reasons why Testing or Manuel Neuer are always at the top in German goalkeeping standards because mentally they're, they're ice cold. They're always there. And that is Gregor Kobe. The fact that Dortmund extended his contract, I think, cannot be overstated how important that is. And you have other players that are that way, but they're starting to overcompensate. And I'm looking at Hummels, I'm thinking, uh, well, I mean, just pick anybody, that they're they're trying too much. On top of that, can't discount the fact that the team over the last two weeks was absolutely ravaged by virus illness. And, you know, you saw it again. They just There's just no energy there because, you know, I have played 
a sport sick and I'm not a top athlete and I just like I'm dragging ass. So, I mean, yeah, that's part of it, but that's not an excuse. You still have the quality of the players to go out there and not play a low block. I mean, hell, play a mid block. You know, if you're going to be more compact, you can shut the other team down at mid midfield. But to allow a team like Leverkusen or Stuttgart the room to come at you time and time and time again. I mean, you're just going to get ripped to pieces. And the other thing that I always say is when you're playing low block all the time and then you trail to switch mentality completely and tactic mentality uh, tactics completely in a match is near impossible for any team to do. That's why when low block teams go down one or two goals, odds are they're going to lose because they They then can't switch to a more aggressive form to get the points uh, unless they get lucky and and Dortmund aren't even getting the luck. You know, I mean, they're very good from set pieces. But, you know, if you don't get a corner against Leverkusen until deep in the second (laughs) half, Uh. who cares if you're good at set pieces? You're not getting free kicks in a dangerous area and you're not getting corners. You know, I mean, at least the Darmstadts, the Union Berlins, the Augsburgs, the Burnleys would get that. They would at least, you know, kind of uh, um, dirtbag play out some kind of set piece and Kelly Jury would deliver it in and somebody would score. But Dortmund's not even capable of doing that. You know why they're not capable of doing that? Because that's not what these players are. That's not what they're trained to do their whole careers. And so this doesn't fit anymore, and it needs to be. It needs to get an ice cold cut now. You may as well cut it now. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, why wait? Uh, how many weeks? Will we have two two weeks left until the winter break. Um, I mean, in theory, you could do it then, but why? Why just do it right now? The Champions League, you're through, so that doesn't matter. The cup, you're out. The league, yeah, you could drop a few more positions, so you'll be seventh. You know, after the winter break, it's not like Dortmund haven't been there before. And figured out, oh, wait, we can actually play football. So I would just, honestly, I'd get rid of them today. Well, honestly, it's just sad that this is the development right now because uh, at the final stage of last season, I thought Dortmund were in pretty good shape, even with losing Bellingham, and would be able to um, build onto what they had built by then. But uh, right now, I feel like this house of cards has completely collapsed. This team is entirely void of any confidence, um, but uh, it's it's not only that. And that, to me, is o- almost a bigger part than this whole confidence thing, because that is fluctuating. Um, but we can maybe switch to the to the uh, cup exit against Stuttgart and the interview of Emre Can, I think with ZDF it was, um, after the game. And, um, you know, he was asked whether, you know, the, the, the typical... Uh, sideline report the question whether Dortmund were lacking the mentality and Emre Can was refuting that instantly. He was like, no, it's not the mentality. It's the footballing thing. And he his main criticism was that um, Dortmund are not aggressive enough. Meaning Dortmund's pressing is shit, which obviously I totally agree with um, because it, it de facto is. He was like, basically... Our defenders don't have ever time to be on the ball for one second because Stuttgart or Leverkusen or whoever um, are putting us under tons of pressure, but the opponents have uh, uh, hours and hours to to play the ball around, basically. Um, And that is sort of the the core issue, but I would extend it to not only that Dortmund's pressing is bad, but also that Dortmund um, uh, with the ball is, is equally bad, if not worse. And obviously these two go hand in hand because as you said, Matthias, when you have a low block and you gain possession, then um, usually you do not have a structure to build up from um, because you are more or less in, in panic mode um, because all your <laughs> all your options usually, or, or most of them are lateral passes, right? Because uh, everyone else is just as deep sitting as you when you are the fullback or the center back gaining the ball. So you punt it upfield, hoping that one of your strikers would get to the ball and hold it up for you. But uh, the way you play, you you put you commit so many numbers uh, to defense that your strikers, be it Fulkrug, Adeyemi, who, or whoever, will be outnumbered and the center backs of the opposing team will not have a a uh, hard time regaining possession off of you, and this is how uh, 31% possession 
uh, come to show against Leverkusen, uh, which uh, yeah is is somewhat embarrassing. Um, and yeah, to me, it is it is uh, mind numbing that you don't want to have you know forty six it was against Stuttgart, but um, I it just never felt like Dortmund had any control in the game. You know, uh, Tasic after the Leverkusen game said, oh. Yeah, they had a lot of the ball, but uh, we sort of guided where they had the ball, so they weren't really dangerous. Uh, guided you know, it towards is... the fucking goal. Yeah, well, sorry. it's... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but... I think that's just wrong. Oh, wait, uh, manipulating Bayer Leverkusen into having the possession in not dangerous areas, quote-unquote, should not be the approach of any Borussia Dortmund coach. Uh, in, in, in general, yes, it's obviously part of that. Of part of good defending is if the opponent has possession, it's nowhere near any dangerous areas. But that can't be the main focus. The main focus is how you dominate the game with the ball against teams like this. And we're so far away from that right now um, that it's that it's really sad. And yes, I don't know uh, the, the chicken and egg debate um, whether you need to press well first in order to uh, regain possession or whether you need to have a good position on play in order to when you lose the ball high up field that you have the bodies uh, up front to instantly be in the pressing situation I mean it goes hand in hand and that to me is is the major problem for Dortmund and the, the major tactical deficiency and it has been exposed by the last two teams more than uh, uh, most other teams this year uh, again I didn't see the Bayern game but I just imagine it wasn't great either um, and that to me right now is, is is the core issue is more on the ball because when Dortmund regain possession and when they are in the build-up, there are no ideas, there are no structures, um, there are oceans <laughs> between the lines uh, of, of attack. It's, it's all very much drawn out and I think the lineup against Stuttgart was just so detrimental because the, the, the shape was a 5-4-1 system and... Uh, I was I was searching for uh, when I looked at first well who's our number ten because there was no Royce there was no Brandt and then I realized well Emre Can is playing in the back five so our midfield is Zabitza and Özcan and then basically Marius Wolf and Andreasson are maybe also tasked with creating uh, for Adeyemi Bino Gittens and Mokoko and obviously it did not work out whatsoever because. There is no way to play any attacking football and this is no way to, to put any pressure uh, on the opponent because you actually need to move the ball around. So A, your position, your positional play is detrimental because you play a system that, as you said, Matthias, the players aren't made for. And B, um, the players you are playing at that point, <laughs> which is ironic, um, also don't have the wherewithal overall to really put footballing pressure on Stuttgart because I'm sorry Oshan and Zabitza is not a good enough uh, double pivot in any system uh, if you ask me you need more ball playing capability and and it, it just showed how how Dortmund just lose possession instantly and yes the front three or front four against Leverkusen they also did not cover themselves in in glory Julian Brandt against Leverkusen had a, had an awful game was losing the ball left, right, and center, uh, in in and passes in situations where you expect him to to play better. Um, but that all being said, I'm more uh, aghast with how uh, tactically outclassed Dortmund are, week in and week out. And sometimes the individual quality papers those cracks. Uh, but right now we're seeing uh, that it, it it's very lopsided. And um, yeah, Stuttgart are a high flying team. Leverkusen, high flying team, um, but nevertheless, um, it it really did expose Dortmund's flaws. And uh, yeah, I'm with you that something needs to change. I don't know if second Tasic is 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 going to make anything better or not. Um, but seriously, Dortmund have to consider what they are doing right now because, as you said, that is very much un Dortmund like, and it's it's embarrassing to see because it, it it feels hopeless from from the first whistle on the way Dortmund play uh, against Stuttgart for example I had no hope no faith in them really uh winning this game because there was no positivity at all and you know we haven't really discussed it yet but in the Leverkusen game to bring on Meunier for Reus when it was 1-1 and the, the game was sort of on the line in the balance 
also an atrocious signal. <laughs> yeah. I, now, granted, Meunier <laughs> did play this one cross, which could true. have led to a winner, but still, you know, just to bring on another defender and hope, okay, let's bring on the bring home the point, which I declared a good result uh, on the on the preview show. Man, <laughs> that felt like yeah, like it, punch in the gut. I mean, if anything, I would have taken. I don't. I don't have an issue with Meunier coming onto the pitch. Um, I probably would have taken Wolf off. I think his theory is Wolf is a better defender than Royce. I will vehemently disagree with that. Uh, I think Royce is a significantly better presser of the ball and better. His pressing resistance is better. Now he's not better positionally defensively, but Wolf was pushed up the pitch, so it wasn't about defensive positioning right then. No. Um, now when. You know, you you had uh, Wolf on the pitch then uh, in the latter parts in the match against Milan when you were up 3-1. Okay, fine. You know, that's that's fine. At that point, you're like, hey, let's <laughs> we played really, really well. We're up three. You know, we've got three goals against Milan. Let's just let's just see out the last five minutes. That's that's totally different. But this but this it just it's it, it just cried for I mean, it, I mean it's, again, it's I'm scared. It's coward football. It's not. Don't want football. And if anything in that moment, even though it would have been, you know, uh, ritual suicide, bring on another attacker. You know, I mean, go for it. So if you lose 2-1, you know, you gained a point against Leverkusen. I, I, I'd rather try and then gain the three points. Now, granted, they almost did, which is just insane. But what that showed, Leverkusen... You know, defensively, they are vulnerable. They don't have the best defenders. They definitely don't have the best goalkeeper. But if you don't test them, um, yeah, they look pretty good. And I think Javi Alonso has figured that out. If you keep the ball far away from the likes of Jonathan Ta or Lukas Radetzky, you're going to do well. If you invite the pressure onto them, you're not going to. I mean, Jonathan Ta for Germany, you know. When when they didn't have Xabi Alonso's tactics to keep the ball away from them, Jonathan Ta looked pretty abject. He looked like Jonathan Ta. Yeah. Um, and you know when I heard in the commentary team they said, "Well, maybe Hummels and Jonathan Ta at the Euros for Germany." I'm like, "Well, if you don't want to make it out of the group, sure." Um, but you know, I think Nagelsmann is smarter than that. But yeah. I mean, he's also not bringing Nico Schlotterbeck, which is no. also very smart. Because, But again, with Schlotterbeck, this is another one of those players where, from a mentality standpoint, he's the kind of guy who will always try. He never gives up. I mean, that's the one thing. He will never, ever give up. But the problem is he'll then try too hard and go too far, and then things open up. And Hummels then overcompensates for him. We've seen it with Hummels in the past as well, when he has no confidence in the person next to him whether that's one or three people next to him, he'll he'll try too much because he feels like he has to. And that's when gaps open up. And and it's a honestly, little bit what happens in the in the equalizer yes, where he left 100%. um which we call it uh, Schick wide open. Yep. Because he was dragging far to uh, you know also shout out to Papadopoulos though because I uh, yeah, thought he played that well. When, he he played fairly well. You know you know yeah for for being in a difficult situation he was very cool, calm, and collect, um, and and exuded a calmness that the veteran players around him at times did not. And I think, you know, I will disagree with Emre Can to a point in terms of mentality. There is a mentality there. Um, but I, I do like the fact no, that he, he did... No, he, he said that the mentality is there. He's, he, he refuted that, you know, the, the implication that don't want to have a mentality Correct. issue. No, what I'm he, saying he, is he, it's there. there is an issue. I believe there is an issue. Um, but the question is, what is the root cause of that issue? Is the root cause just like we've seen in the past with players like Rafael Guerrero or Gio Reyna to just be like, uh, oh, well, well, I'm just not going to try now because it didn't work this one time. I don't see that from this side. No. But what I see is a a lack of confidence, and that's part of mentality as well, to just do it. Now, the question is, of course... Are they just heeding the words of the manager to a T and that's the issue? Because you can't also then the manager send the team out and the team goes, well, we're just going to do whatever the fuck we want. You know, then you have huge problems. So it just, I, I personally believe a manager change is absolutely needed because you can't continue on like this and you can't hope and pray that the winner 
with the winter break will give this coaching team some kind of divine inspiration and in you know that they understand oh maybe we should play differently because i'm sorry this is your second season you had two winter breaks and a summer break if you haven't figured it out you're not cut out for this job that's just a flat out fact you know i'm it's, yearning for some continuity on on the coaching whatever position. it is yeah, I mean, it, it, no one, we're not a team, a, a club. I mean, yes, you know, if <clears throat> with the Hitzfeld years and the club years, there was stability, but in between, there wasn't, you know, yeah. um, between it took a long time between Hitzfeld leaving and club coming, uh, barring the stint with Matthias Zama. Um, so let's call it post Matthias Zama and pre Jurgen Klopp, kind of those. Five, six years were rather turbulent. Um, and honestly, you know, we're we're past the five, six year point of Jürgen Klopp no longer being here. And there is a lack of stability. I felt like there was a little bit there with Lu- Lucien Favre, but, um, you know, it just, Dortmund needs to find the right coach. And the beauty is it's still a club that is performing well, that makes it to the Champions League, and, and that is on everyone's mind uh, from media and, and TV and so on. So you should be able to attract a good coach, a good quality coach to run this team and and squad, and I think they can, but they don't have it right now. Now, right. I will say you couldn't really sack Tezic in the summer, given how close he, he'd won the DFB Pokal and he got close to winning the Bundesliga. I, I understand that. But now, I mean, Dortmund are in danger of missing out on their absolute minimum target, which is top four. And that is, that would be, now they would be okay for a season, maybe two, but it's just financially it would be not a disaster, but it would be really, really bad. And you just can't have that happen because the other teams will just get stronger because of it. And what bothers me also, Stefan, is, I mean, you said high-flying Stuttgart, high-flying Leverkusen, pound for pound, if you compare players, Stuttgart isn't better than Borussia Dortmund. They're playing better and they're coached better, but the quality of the team isn't better than Borussia Dortmund. Uh, Leverkusen and Dortmund, I would say quality of team is about par. You know, in some positions... Leverkusen are better in some positions Dortmund are better but in both the, against both those teams it looks like the way Dortmund played that there's such a huge quality gap uh it's as if it was uh Augsburg or Mainz on the pitch playing against them and not Borussia Dortmund and that's to me the biggest um you know using a German term Armutszeugnis you know I mean basically a report card of Poverty. <laughs> it's bad translation, <laughs> but it's pretty the, much the poverty certificate. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much the the <laughs> literal translation, but yeah. it basically means like it's it just it shows how bad you are, how poor you are, and in this Proof case, how poor poverty. you are, how poor you are at the game of football. And so, for me, at the end of the day, it comes down to the manager. Uh, who is setting up the tactic, who is setting up the team to go into a match, and he has completely gotten it wrong in the most horrendous way possible in two matches back-to-back that we just see. And we'll take it total, honestly, three matches. Uh, I'm taking the Bayern match out a little bit, but twice against Stuttgart and now against Leverkusen were... Setting up like that and playing like that shows you have no confidence in the ability to go out and win a match versus what? trying to not lose a match. Matthias, you were there on, uh, I don't know if it was the previous part or the one before, where I said I'm looking forward to the Stuttgart game from the perspective that I want to see how Dortmund will react and adjust to the league loss against Stuttgart. Because it's basically pretty much the same game with uh, similar personnel. Um, not much time in between and what the adjustments were. And the adjustment was, okay, we're just going to sit even deeper 
and 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 hope for the best and to me um i think this is like the worst takeaway um that is also very reactionary if if i may say so to um how dortmund have 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 played recently and things not working out and then well we're, we're just going to try to defend um the best we can and then uh yeah that's that but once stuttgart made it 1-0 um, Dortmund, I, I mean, they almost scored the equalizer with Bino Gittens. He was slightly offside. But once that did not stand, there was once again nothing. And that was, it, it's just, like you said, it's just not good enough. And I have no idea how Dortmund are not going to play against Leipzig because this, the, the one difference will be it is a home game. Um, and it's funny because Marco Rose maybe has even the potential to end Tessic's career, um, depending how uh, bad it is. Uh, so we'll 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 see how how that uh, <laughs> that game goes. But it is of course a very important game for Dortmund because Dortmund are out of the Champions League spots. The uh, season goals are in danger, as uh, Hans Joachim Watzke wrote. In the statement uh, when uh, Tessic was installed and Favre was sacked. So here we are again. Um, this time Dortmund are only one point of Leipzig. So 26 points Leipzig, 25 points Dortmund. And in sixth place comes Hoffenheim with 20 points. Um, so I feel like Dortmund will probably remain in this top five. Because the rest of the league, the gap is just too large. Um, but that being said, uh, you must not... Uh, lose too much ground on the four teams above because otherwise it would be very difficult to qualify for the Champions League in the second half of the season now um, I want to I wanna do say Matthias that I also think it's not entirely Telsic's fault because I also don't see any great alternative as a positive number 8 right now uh, you you're playing either Zabitza or John in that position. Maybe you can drop Julian Brandt a little bit deeper. Maybe you can uh, put Girena in there to to be that sort of uh, deep lying playmaker. But I just I feel like this is a very necessary position that Dortmund have in order to play a bit more positive football. Um, and there's just no player to really fulfill that role, to be honest. And um, I also feel like the fullback situation for Dortmund has been not great going into the season. And now, with Riasson potentially being out for a very extended period of time, because, of course, he had to pick up a knee injury in, in garbage time against Stuttgart. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what is going to happen, because Matteo Moret obviously, is, is a non-factor. So I assume going forward it will be someone out of Meunier, Wolf and Benz Baini. I don't know how much uh, Terzic trusts Meunier right now, but yeah, shoving him into this situation, I don't know if it's going to make things better or worse. I don't know. I'm just I'm just a little bit uh, disenchanted right now with this team, with the squad building overall. I mean, the way Dortmund have reinvested the, the money that they got from the transfers of Jaden Sancho, Bellingham, Haaland, etc. Um, is uninspiring, if I may say so. So I... I don't want to squarely put it all on Terzic. Um, the match transfer was not only controversial, but it's not working out whatsoever. I mean, just from well, he's injured of, right now. Yeah, that's so, what I mean. He he yeah. he is injured. Um, but beforehand, I also didn't feel like he gave Dortmund a lot of positivity in in, in build up. Uh, maybe there were a few few glimpses, but yeah, he is definitely out uh, until the beginning of twenty twenty four. So he is not going to save Dortmund either. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit uh, hopeless for what is to come for the next weeks. The only good thing that Dortmund have going for themselves is really the individual quality. Um, Mats Hummels is playing really well right now. Uh, Nico Schlotterbeck needs to step up his game, but you know he is also struggling with injury and and with full fitness after um, picking up a virus himself. I think. So, um, yeah, there's that. But, you know, with Adeyemi, with Malm, Bino Gittens, Mukoko, although he just picked up an injury as well. Um, Fulkrug, you, ha you have decent attacking players to, that can make the difference. Of course, Marco Reus and Julian Brandt are also 
uh, very much to mention. Um, uh, Giorena, these are all all difference makers. So uh, this is sort of the the last thread of hope I have. Um, but as you said, Matthias, the the largest problem is is the collective effort and the tactical acumen that is entirely missing. And yeah, I would like to have a manager that can bring at least that back because there is so much potential in this team and you can make a lot more out of there is. And, uh, you know, right now Dortmund are worse than the parts at their disposal, but ideally you want a team that is even better than the sum of their parts, if that makes sense. So I feel yeah. like we're, we're, we're very much underachieving right now. And I'm very annoyed when Watzke always, you know, talks about the financial discrepancy between Bayern and Dortmund. And uh, woe is me, we obviously can't take a challenge Bayern because we're so much poorer. However, uh, when you see Stuttgart and Leverkusen outperform Dortmund um, in, in that aspect, there are then no excuses that you have left. And I would even make the point that Dortmund, to an extent, has has more resources than Leipzig. Although Leipzig do have a lot of resources and uh, eight million farm teams, so it's it's yeah, it's a give or a take little, there. It's a different different uh, makeup, you know. It's for me if you look at tactics, but they don't have the ticket revenue because no, no place obviously is not empty. Um, what I would say is. Um, I mean, I look at the squad, I look at who who's playing and how they're playing. And I mean, I would scrap everything that that Tezic is doing uh, formationally, tactically, and build it up with a 4-3-3. You know, personally, I would have, you know, Chan or Ochan at the base and then Julian Brandt or Reyna as your creative outlet with the runner box to box next to him in Zabitza or Nemecha, depending on who is who who can play. And then on the wings, yeah. You, you play Royce, Jamie Bino, Gittens, um, Mahin, Duranville when he's fit, and then Mukoko as well. And then in the striking capacity you've got Fukruk, Alea, and Mukoko. I mean you you're too deep at every single one of those positions. At least too deep. And uh, defensively, you know, a lot of this comes down to fitness and health. Virus going through and people being injured doesn't help at all. But, I mean, the depth is there to play it. And the quality of the players in and out of possession is 100% there to do it. The self-belief in the man calling the shots on the bench isn't there. And that, for me... I was on a serious XMFC with following the Milan match with Jason Davis and Eric Winalda. And Eric Winalda asked me, you know, what, what's the real Borussia Dortmund? And, and I said, the upcoming matches against Leverkusen, Stuttgart and Leipzig will show us who Dortmund is under Terzic right now. And unfortunately, that's very, very true in a very, very negative sense. And I stick to it. This is this is Tezic ball, and it's not good enough, and he needs to go. The tactical switch and the change with the players you have is honestly not rocket science. The players are there. They were built for that. And you just have to be able to do it. And what I am seeing is a coach who is not able to convey that style of football, even though I feel like he did at one point. And that's that's the big head scratcher. And that's why I've fully gone into the Tezic out um, camp. I, I agree with you, given that we only have a couple of weeks left in the first half of the season. Champions League, you're guaranteed to move on to the next round. Um, you know, you've got three matches left in the Bundesliga, I believe. Leipzig and then who else? Mainz, Augsburg, something like that. And, yeah, I don't have um, it in front of me right now, which I probably should have. But, <laughs> but you know, you can see out the rest of the first half of the season and, and still stay in the top five, maybe even stay in the winter in the top four. And so I stick to my guns of I would make a coaching change now. Um, because why wait until the winter break? Why wait until after Leipzig? I mean, maybe Leipzig, that's the one. You know, maybe that is the Tezic. You decide your future against Leipzig. Um, and maybe he's earned that 
um, on a on a personal level, given what he did when he took over for Favre and what he almost did last season, and what the team's shown in the Champions League so far. Um, you know, excluding the PSG match, which you know that match was very timid. Let's put it that way. Um, maybe he's earned the right to get one more chance to play better, uh, to, ha- to, to set up the team in a more positive fashion. And if they do, then yeah, you know, you may as well stick with them for right now. But I have absolutely no confidence that we're going to see that dramatic of a shift in a few days. Yeah, well, stranger things have happened. He here's the one thing I would say. I'm I'm so I'm a little bit heartbroken for for Tessage because obviously uh <laughs> he is a Dortmund fan. He has that identification potential, let's say. Um a, as a figure um, obviously he has uh he, you know, he is obviously not the the fan favorite right now due to the way Dortmund are playing, but obviously as a person himself, um I would be heartbroken for him if this whole thing doesn't work out because, you know, it's a chance of a lifetime you have then sort of missed. You know, you could have become champions with Dortmund and uh, even, uh, you know, may- maybe uh, the the author of a, of a great, uh, you know, time period for Dortmund. But uh, yeah, I think everyone and he himself can probably see that um, it's, not, it's not good enough. He does not have the experience... Uh, uh, and and whatever is needed to to make this a good team, but Matthias, you have said yourself that Dortmund have played much better under him. Maybe there is a way to to find and recreate that uh, for the Leipzig game. Maybe uh, uh, there is a turnaround because uh, Terzic has been Mister Turnaround uh, within the season uh, twice now. Um, so it is it is not completely excluded that he can't himself, uh, you know, pull himself out of this by his own bootstraps. Um, but yeah, it is looking very dire right now. And my confidence uh, is at an all-time low. Um, so, I, yeah. I, I, I'm just not sure where we're going to survive this next period. Or rather, he is, uh, <laughs> to be honest. But um, yeah, like I said, to me, the Tessage uh position as a coach and the Vatska position as a CEO uh somewhat linked because uh I said when Tesic was hired that this is Vatska's final bullet so to speak um because uh, I think the coach uh, coaching decisions overall um have been terrible uh in in recent years and I disagree with most of them and so I I'm hoping that uh, the sporting direction, which has been topsy-durvy to say the least, uh, will have a much more resolute um, identity to offer going forward. And um, yeah, so I I just don't see Dortmund having long-term success with Terzic. And once you have that um, view, it is very hard to continue with the coach. So... There it is, <laughs> I guess. Um, Matthias, I don't even, I don't even want to give like an in-depth preview um, no. of 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 Leipzig right now because uh, it is it is more about Dortmund and how they will approach this game and how they will react and if they will react because if they play the same way against Leipzig, they will be booed off of the pitch by their own fans, hundred percent. Because that is there was almost a luck for Dortmund that they had an away game back to back because. Had they played like this at the Westfalen Stadion, it would have not been pretty whatsoever. But that is that is really also the problem. I, I feel like it is going to be very uncomfortable in the Westfalen Stadion on Saturday evening should just one thing go wrong because this team has very little credit with the fans right now. Which is really sad, given where we were just six months ago. So... um Yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything to say about playing against Red Bullshit Leipzig. So, um, don't want better win that match. I will not accept anything but three points. Anything below three points, and I think that's the end of that. I feel like it's not just whether you win or not. It's it's more of how you play. Well, it's how you play. I mean, it is. But play well and get three points. 
anything less and you know i've i've got nothing left all right <laughs> then it's time to end the show thank you matthias for being here everyone it was so much fun yeah but <laughs> such even, a drop even, of sunshine i am today <laughs> <laughs> even bigger thank you for everyone uh, who even tunes in because i personally I, I listen to podcasts uh, much more frequently when the teams that I like and follow are doing well <laughs> rather than when they're absolute shit. So uh, thanks for that. And uh, I guess we'll be back uh, next week after the, I guess, Leipzig game. Are we waiting for a Tessage sacking? <laughs> um, I mean, Stay there's tuned. no... Stay tuned, we'll see. Is, is there a midweek game? Is the PSG game uh, in between? I'm not entirely sure. Um Yes, it is. So, uh, yeah, we're, I guess we'll be back on Thursday again after the PSG game, un unless there needs to be an emergency episode, uh, which uh, can, of course, happen. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't think we need to preview the PSG match anyway. Everyone knows what this is all about. You know, Dortmund have to uh, not lose to win the group. And that's that, which uh, they they uh, ought to uh, not lose because um, the way uh, it's shaping out, uh, it is much easier this time around um, if you win your group to then play opponents uh, that are losing because everyone else topping the group right now um, are, are all the big boys and if don't want a chance to make uh, the quarterfinals, um, they need to win their group. Anyhow, um, that's <laughs> that's that's the uh, tiny PSG preview for that, uh, to state the most obvious fact anyway. And then, yeah, don't want to have a gauntlet <laughs> against Augsburg, Mainz, Darmstadt, Köln, uh, all te uh, no, no, uh, not Köln, sorry, but uh, Augsburg, Mainz and Darmstadt, these are all teams they should beat um, quite comfortably in, in the sense that... Uh, <laughs> Um, they they are the better team, but uh, the past has shown that Dortmund traditionally struggle with these teams. So yeah, I'm I'm in I'm intrigued. Let's say. Anyway, uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you, Matthias, for coming on and uh, renting through our little therapy session here. Goodbye. <laughs>